Hi, good morning. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. The Securities and Action Commission is cautioning the public against transacting business with investment firms Golden Empire and Loom as the two institutions are unlicensed. According to the regulator of the capital market, the public needs to be wary of such institutions to avoid being prey to scams. Here's the Director General of the Securities and Action Commission, Reverend Daniel Obamitete, explaining how the commission intends to deal with the issue. We have received some uh, notice through the usual channels by which people notify us of these uh, schemes. And we'll follow our, our usual uh, uh, due uh, uh, process or procedure in advising clients. But let me quickly say that it's important for investors always to ask questions. And one of the fundamental questions you should ask before you place your money with any, uh, any firm is to f find out what is the underlying investment you know because if anybody promises you a return and in any case we've indicated that when someone promises you a high return and tries to tell you that the return is guaranteed it means that there is high risk involved and you are better advised to look for the exit door but the, the a, a basic question anybody needs to ask is what are you investing in what are the underlying investments okay because that will help you to appreciate what is being offered to you people should move away from the habit of uh, a friend or a relative saying that oh this thing is good or it's very good because that is you know one of the ways to get into something that at the end of the day you end up uh, burning your fingers. So I'm just giving some general uh, you know, piece of advice. Former Finance Minister Seth Tekwe has accused the current government of peddling untruths when it comes to calculating debt figures. Mr. Tekwe, in an interview with Joy Business on the country's economy, said the method being used to now calculate the debt levels must be looked at again. Let's be careful that we are not changing. And this is an important fiscal rule. Fiscal rule is not just about de uh, deficits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fiscal rules span how you calculate debt. And let me give you another example. You remember <clears throat> in 2017, it was at the Public Accounts Committee. Mm -hmm. End March, exchange rate was used to calculate the 2016 debt, not end December. End December, OK. Is that being repeated? Because if you did it for, the, for an NDC administration, because the exchange rate depreciated. So you can imagine if we were using end March exchange rate to calculate 2018 uh, debt. Look at the rate of depreciation of the, of that the would, currency. That would be great. Right. And so you have changed methodology. And when you change methodology, it means that the two figures are no longer comparable. And that is why you have fiscal rules. And I would hope that the regulations that went to Parliament is resolving many of these, you know, arbitrary changes in the fiscal rules. Okay, which, which also goes to my point about how we calculate the articles which are coming, how we calculate, you know, arrears and what to add and what not to yeah. add. In other news, policymakers in the real estate industry have been urged to monitor and regulate the construction of buildings to meet environmentally friendly standards. Speaking to Joy Business ahead of the Ghana Green Building Summit, the founder, uh, Cyril Tete, explained the move will help save the nation costs through energy conservation. According to the World Green Building Council, a green building is a building that in its design, construction or operation reduces negative impact and can create a positive impact on climate and the natural environment. Experts say green buildings preserve natural resources as well as improve quality of life. Although the concept is popular in parts of Europe, it is yet to catch up in developing countries like Ghana. It is for this reason that the Ghana Green Building Summit was designed to create awareness on the need and importance of going green in the housing sector. Cyril Ni Aite Tete is founder of the summit. Once we grow, once we want to put up all these fancy um, skyscrapers all over town, we need to steer them in the proper direction so that they are green and they have less impact on the environment. And you create that virtual cycle where the, these buildings are sustainable and then 
you also have your CTs because there's another portion of the of the of the summit that I've not mentioned of the particular section, which will have a discussion on creation of um, sustainable cities. And a few what days or weeks ago, we witnessed the oh, the whole of Accra almost flooded. It's all because of the way we have engineered uh, the city. Speaking on ways to make green homes affordable, architect and chief operating officer of Axelna's company, Agnes of Oswapia, explained the commercialization of some environmentally friendly materials will be helpful. So on the market, there's not a lot of variety. Concrete is sustainable, but that's pretty much the most easy to get around here. Things like wood, stone, which are natural and so will have less negative impact on the environment, are not commercialized and so we don't have them on a large scale. And so once we are able to get some of these things commercialized, then it becomes easier for everyone to use it. The second edition of the summit will be held at the Kempiski Hotel on June 13th on the themes Alternative Material Use, Green Finance, Sustainable Cities, Ratings and Certification. Karen Dodo's report for Joy Business. All right, that's it for business. Back to you, Venice. Thank you very much, Daryl. Coming up shortly in sports, we preview the upcoming games in the Women's World Cup and the semi-finals of the Under-20 World Cup later today. <laughs>